Quiche is really delicious, and it isn't that hard to make. I was always really intimidated by it, but once I've made it a few times, it's super simple. And here's how I make mine. First, I gotta start with the pie crust. I'm going to be using a combination of butter and shortening in my version to make more of a savory crust. First, I need to make sure that the fat is as cold as possible, and then I'll need to cube it up. I also need to make sure my water is ice cold as well to keep everything as cold as I can. And I'm also using vodka in this recipe because I've been told that it reduces the production of gluten, which is what makes a crust taste sandy and not flaky. And to speed things along, I'm gonna bring this together in my food processor. First, I'll combine the flour and salt and give that a quick pulse just to bring that together. Once the flour and salt are together, I'm going to then add in the fat and pulse that until I get pea-sized chunks of fat coated in the flour mixture. Then I can start to drizzle in the water and vodka until a dough ball forms like this. Then I'll dump that out onto a floured surface so I can shape it into a disc and then cut it in half. This recipe makes two pie crusts and we'll only be using one. So the other one can go in the freezer for use another day if you'd like. Once I have these wrapped up, I'll get them into the fridge where they can chill and I can start prepping the filling of this quiche. I'm gonna be using cheddar cheese, some leftover broccoli and onion I have, and then some leftover Canadian bacon I had too. And you can use a lot of different things here, as long as you end up with two cups of ingredients to add into the quiche. And here I'm just gonna dice everything up into roughly about the same size, so that way it all blends into the quiche well. Quiche is great because you can end up using a lot of things that you have left over in your fridge. For the cheese, I like to grate it on the large side of my box grater. But since we aren't making cheese sauce here, you can also use pre-shredded cheese as well. Once I have them all prepped, I'm going to saute them in a tablespoon of butter. This will help cook them down a bit because they won't cook much inside the custard as it bakes. And depending on the ingredients you're using, you want to make sure that you take out as much moisture as you can. This way your quiche doesn't turn out watery. And this step will really add quite a bit of flavor as well. I like to start with the ham so I can get some color on it and also develop a bit more fond on the bottom of the pan. Next, I'll go in with the onion so I can use it to break up some of the fond that we developed. Then I'll add in the broccoli last and give that just a couple minutes to cook together. I'll also add in a half cup of water here to steam the broccoli and to scrape up some more of those brown spots on the bottom of the pan. Once the water has mostly cooked down, I'll hit it with some salt and pepper and continue to cook it down until all the water is cooked off. Once those are all cooked, I can push them off to the side and let them cool while I go back to working on the dough. First step is gonna be preheating the oven to either 350 degrees with convection or 375 degrees with no convection. I need to blind bake the crust so it has a bit of structure before I add the custard. Otherwise the crust wouldn't bake completely and be a bit soggy in the end. So I will take one of the dough balls and turn it out onto a floured surface so I can roll it into the right size and I will use my pie dish to make sure I'm rolling it to a size that is just larger than my dish. Once I have it right, I'll flour the top of it and a little bit on my rolling pin, so that way I can use it to transfer the dough to my pie dish. I find this to be the easiest way to move a pie crust like this into the pie dish. Then I will make sure I get it tucked into the corners and I'll create a little crimp on the crust as well. This way I can pull those loose bits into one shape so they don't burn in the oven. And then I'll dock the bottom of the crust with a fork to release the steam while it bakes, and then add a piece of parchment paper on top so I can add in my beans. You can use pie weights if you have them, but the dried beans work pretty well for me. Then I'll bake for about 15 minutes with the beans. And then remove the beans and bake for another seven minutes or until the crust has a little bit of color. And while the crust is baking, I'll make the custard. I'll start with four large eggs, and whisk those together to mix them up and add just a little bit of air. I'll also add in the salt and pepper, along with a combination of milk and cream, and then bring all that together. Then once my custard is done, I will add my cooked filling along with the shredded cheese and custard. And all of the ingredients and steps are in the description below and on my website link below too. And then I'll bake at the same 375 or 350 with convection for about 45 minutes or until the middle is almost set and you have some good color on top. You also want to keep an eye on the crust and if it starts to get too much color, you can add some foil to protect it from burning if needed. 
Then I'll pull it out and let it cool for about 15 minutes. This will give a chance for the custard to set up before we cut into it. Or after it cools, you could wrap it up in foil and freeze it as well. And what you're looking for is a good distribution of your ingredients along with cooked crust on the bottom. And this one turned out really great. The combination of the milk and cream helps the custard stay light and moist, and there's just the right amount of filling in each bite. So I hope you give this a try, and if you do, let me know how it turned out down in the comments below. Also, if you're looking for another great make-ahead meal that you can freeze, here's a video I made for chicken enchiladas. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.